Hello and welcome to another DigiMedia Pros tutorial. I'm your host, Marcella Lewin. Today I'd like to welcome Curtis Fritch from AlphaDogs. Curtis is a full-time editor working at AlphaDogs in Burbank, California. He works on indie films, documentaries, corporate projects, promo sweetening, and everything in between. Curtis, welcome to the DigiMedia Pros tutorial series. Thanks, Marcelo. Glad to be here. It's going to be a fun one. Today we're going to be talking about how to export audio from not only Avid, but also Final Cut Pro 10 and Adobe Premiere Pro. Actually, Final Cut Pro 7, and then you're going to mention also about 10. Uh, but we're definitely going to talk about all those. And this is important for your audio guy, right? That you prepare things properly. Yes, this is very important. There's a lot of times where video editors may not even know what some of these options are just because they pertain so much to audio. So what I've done is I've collected some of the things that I've learned from helping them out uh, to sort of speed the process along. So what I think this will do is help alleviate some of the concerns video editors have with uh, handing things off to audio editors, not knowing the different options. Uh, it's still no great substitute for talking to an audio editor. I would say the most important thing, and I'll probably hit on this several more times, is just be in communication, email, call, text, whatever. Ask questions. What do you need? Does this work for you? But for the most part, this uh, should help alleviate a lot of questions, I think, for video editors who are not sure what their export settings should be. Cool. Now, before we get into this, how did you get into the field of audio? I was working a bunch of odd jobs, started playing around with music, and then suddenly I was really interested in audio in general, started taking some classes, and lo and behold, 10 years later, here I am. So are you a musician as well? I try to be, but I'm not very good. I try to be. <laughs> So what should audio professionals working in film projects know more of, the artistic side of audio or the technical? I would say it depends on uh, what kind of job uh, you have. I would say if you are doing exclusively uh, sound design or exclusively Foley uh, artistry, things like that, things that have a very, very specific set, that would be more creative. If, if you're doing things like uh, ADR and... Uh, production sound and re-recording, I would say it's good to have a little bit more of a technical knowledge because you might have to know how things go back and forth between different systems. Um, the most important thing I would think is, in terms of technical knowledge, is if you are the person delivering to a network or to another person, that would be where you'd want to know more technical than anything. And the creative side is definitely what you want to have when it comes to clients. Uh, so you can learn to sort of crawl up into their brain and you know figure out what they're trying to uh, accomplish and see if you can get your vision across with theirs. So it's really being able to translate what they want into the technical aspects of it. Yes, yes. Well, it looks like you're pretty much ready to do this. We're going to start out with Avid, right? And how to export from Avid. So I'll let you take over. If I have any questions, I'll jump in. So right here we have the uh, Avid timeline and what I've done is I've already assumed that uh, as an editor uh, what you're going to do is take all of the audio tracks and split them out aside from video. So we have no video tracks in our current timeline and the best thing to do is in Avid is to have a new bin and so I named mine AAF export bin just as a way to sort of identify that. The reason you would have a new bin is because when Avid exports an AAF, it likes to create additional files within that bin and it can clutter your workspace a little bit. So I like to just have a bin specifically for exporting audio. So that way you don't see duplicates of audio files that it's exporting. So what we have here is we've got dialogue, we've got a couple of effects track, and then we've got a couple of music tracks. So what I would say is most uh, different about the naming convention between Avid and the rest of the programs is that Avid, when going to Pro Tools, these track names will come over. Most other programs, they won't come over, but in Avid, they will. So if you want to name them in a MIDI composer, they will translate to Pro Tools, and that really helps some people. It may not do anything for them, or it may be wrong, but it's just handy to know. 
So what you have here is just a few cuts, and the way you would export audio for an audio editor is you would use an AAF, or Advanced Authoring Format. And the way to do that is you go over to your record window, and you would go to Export. So when we're exporting, we have uh, the Option tab here, and you want to click that, and that brings up all the options you have for exporting an AAF. So it's where it says export as AAF. That's the first step. Now we also have these three options up top. Use marks is for when you want to set an in and out and you export that way. Use enabled tracks is for when all tracks that are enabled will be exported. And then the AAF edit protocol. AAF edit protocol allows you to export an AAF over two gigs. So I'd highly recommend checking that in general. It's always handy to have that. And I honestly don't know any reason why you wouldn't have that checked. So if you have an in and out and you have all your tracks highlighted, I would use marks and use enabled tracks. Now up here you have include all video and data tracks. If you've eliminated all the video from your sequence, you don't need this. You just deselect that. And then all of the audio details are the only thing you can see. So from here, the export method, this one can vary between mixer to mixer. And the way that I found works best for me and most of the people I know is you go to what's called consolidate media. Consolidate media will allow you to add handles, giving a portion of your media with handles on either side. Copy all media will give everything that's ever been used in the timeline in its full form. And that can end up being a gigantic file. And you might not want that, especially if it's a longer project. And the link to option should only be used if you have the media on the same location as where you're doing your video editing or all of your media. And it is probably one of the most difficult ones to do because you have to have everything set up the same way. So I normally advise against link to completely. You can do copy, but I would not recommend it. Consolidate is how I would normally recommend you export because it gives us most of what we want in a small, concise format. So Consolidate Media, you're going to have a dialog box that pops up that says Handle Length. That, again, is something that varies from mixer to mixer. I would highly recommend asking them what they would prefer. So if you're working in 2997 and your mixer asks for five second handles, you would type in 150 frames. That gives him five seconds on the beginning of your clip and five seconds on the end of your clip in order to be able to work out room tone and other things that they think they might need from that. Now there's a few other options here. Include rendered audio effects. Now. Most of the time you would not want to check this unless there's a specific reason for why you have an audio effect rendered in. Let's say they pitched him down to give him a very spooky feel. Sometimes they may want to keep that. That's when you would want to check this box. Now, there's one down here called Remove Track Effects. That's what you would check if, let's say, you were doing a review with a client and they just wanted to make it louder. So you put on a plug-in like a compressor or a limiter that made it louder or something that gave it a little less bass or a little more bass. But it was something that you know you're not going to want later or it's something you know the mixer is going to affect. That's when you would click Remove Track Effects. Split Tracks to Mono, that normally we would get anyways. Most of the time, you see stereo tracks coming over as mono in Pro Tools. We can select and make sure that the tracks will be panned left and right. So this may not be necessary. And then render all audio effects. That's just if you have audio effects in your sequence that need to be rendered down. Again, it's usually pretty self-explanatory. Add audio mix down tracks shouldn't really be necessary due to the fact that if you're exporting a video reference, it should have audio on it already to give us a guide. So we really wouldn't need a mix down track, but again, ask your mixer, see what he prefers. And then these last three, convert audio sample rate, bit depth, and file format, these again would be dependent completely on the project. Most of the time I've never had to change these just because the project format they're working with is the kind I'm going to be working with. They're normally going to be in 48 sample rate. They're normally going to be either 16 or 24 bit depth. And as long as the audio file format is either WAVE or AFE, 
it works for us just fine as long as it's uncompressed. And then our last option down here where it says media destinations and audio, there's three different options here. The two most common ones I see are folder and embedded in AAF. Folder will take all of your audio files and put them in a folder where Pro Tools can access them. Embedded in AAF is made as one single .aaf file that then Pro Tools or whatever program you're using to break out will use automatically. This is the one I check almost every time. And the reason I do that is because this is the best way to troubleshoot if something's gone wrong with my AAF. If I look at that file size and it's something under what I expected it to be, say 20 megabytes, 30 megabytes, and it's a long show, then I know I have a problem. Most of the time, an AAF should be a pretty big size depending upon the length of what you're doing. Normally, I would say a gig, two gigs, three gigs. And this way is the best way to make sure that you're doing it correctly because then the size of the AAF will also tell you if you've done the export correctly. So that means that all your audio files will be embedded in that AAF versus the folder where you will have one file per each audio track? Correct, yes. So what this does is it just has it encapsulated all in one file and the other one it has to search for them and relink to where that is. I see. And that is it for the AAF. So you just hit save and then you name it whatever you need to. I just called it export from Avid. Then we'll click on save and then we'll open this in Pro Tools. So here we are in Premiere and I'm going to show you how we do the same thing we just did in Avid in Premiere. So again, we have just the five audio tracks. We've got our dialogue, we've got our two effects tracks and then our music track. And the way we would work in this is Premiere has an option for both OMF and AAF. There are advantages and disadvantages to both, but I'm going to show you both of them just to show you what those options are. So the way you would export is set your in, then set your out, and then go up here to File, Export, and the first one is OMF, so we'll click on that. And the first thing you're going to be presented with is an OMF title. Just type in whatever you need. So APP OMF export. The sample rate is 48. Bit depth is 16. Again, if these work for your mixer and there's no conversion, you don't need to change that. Files, embed audio, and separate audio are the same as embedded in AAF and folder in Avid. So embed would create it all into one OMF and separate audio would make it so that there's a folder. So just for this sake, again, this is much cleaner and easier to double check, troubleshoot your work, is to just embed audio. And then under render, you want to do the same thing. Copy audio files gives you the entire file that you use in your media, whereas trim will use only what's in your timeline with handles on either side. And again, it gives you handle lengths right here. So let's give 90, depending upon what your mixer needs. And then I always click include pan. And then that's it for the OMF. So now let me show you an AAF, it's very similar. Go over to AAF, again, sample rate 48, bit depth 16, embed and separate once again. On the AAF, it gives you the option to select either AIFF or broadcast wave. These are both uncompressed formats. You can ask your mixer which one he prefers. I prefer wave myself, but again, it's personal choice. They're both audio that is acceptable. Is there more compatibility between one and another, let's say between Windows and Mac? I believe you can embed some metadata in AIFF better, but it also depends on which version of broadcast wave you're working with. But they're both interchangeable between Windows and Mac. So as far as I know, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head if I've heard anything, but as far as I know, there's really no difference. They're both interchangeable. They both work flawlessly on either system. Perfect, thanks. Yeah, no problem. And again, you have copy complete or trim audio files. And then you click OK and that would render out either your AAF or OMF for Pro Tools. So here we are in Final Cut 7, and I'm going to show you how to export an OMF 
through Final Cut out to your audio editors. With this same five track setup, again, you would set your in and your out, and then you would go up here to File, Export, Audio to OMF. And Final Cut 7 is very, very simple. It has your sample rate, your bit depth, and again, these are usually something that are predetermined. Ask your mixer if you have any questions about it, but it's 48 and either 16-bit or 24-bit are the standard. Handle length, again, this is dependent completely upon what your project frame rate is. So if you were working in 23 and 8, you give one second of handles, that's 24 frames. And then for these three, I always have these three selected, crossfade transition, levels, and pan. We like to have all those. They come over nicely, and they give us a lot of information. Now, in this case, it's not allowing you to select, or there's no option to select separate files or embedded files. So how do you get it? Is it? Are they all separate, or are they embedded by default here? This is embedded by default. Now, it's worth mentioning that in Final Cut 7, that the OMF, uh, the way the framework works, is you cannot export an OMF above two gigabytes. Now, the way to get around that, however, is if you have a longer project, you have two ways to do it. One way, which I would not recommend because it's usually a lot of time and a lot of headaches, and if you have a nested sequence, it gets even worse, is to break up your project by time code. So let's say you were doing it in acts. You could do that, but you also have to make sure that your acts start at the correct time code each time you export the OMF. Otherwise, it's going to start at the hour for each one, and then we're going to have a real difficult time trying to figure out where everything lines up. The much, much easier way, and the way that I recommend to each person how they do it, is to go down here and to take the track that has the most information on it. Let's say track one and two were the ones with the most amount of clips. I would turn everything else off. Just mute those clips and then go back up here and export that as an OMF. And then as soon as that's done, you come back and you turn these tracks off and turn all the remaining ones on. And what that will do is it will export the entire film for just those tracks. So there's no need to readjust for time code, but it gives you the entire track. So that will end up in multiple OMFs, which is not a problem. We'll just get them all in separate chunks. And do you need to name those OMFs in a special way? In other words, do you name them like track one and two and then the other one, three, four, and five, so the audio editor knows or it doesn't really matter, the Pro Tools will figure it out? Pro Tools will figure it out, but it is definitely helpful for us if you name them tracks one and two and the next OMF is tracks three and four, uh, just so we know how it was organized in your timeline, especially if you have everything broken up by, say, for instance, this is dialogue, and down here we have our two effects. If you wanted to export just dialogue, you could click these off and then export this and name that dialogue or DX, and then same for the effects. Just have these, name this effects, and you're off and running, and we know exactly what we're importing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So there's also Final Cut 10, which has not had a professional exporting audio method out of it since its inception. There are two programs you can use with that that can export an AAF or an OMF out of it. There is one called Extra Pro, which exports an AAF directly out of Final Cut 10. And there's also a program called X7, which will convert your project back to Final Cut 7 and then export that as an OMF. Now, these come with some cost, and they also aren't 100% perfect, but they do work. There's also using roles command, which you can do in Final Cut 10. However, this won't give you any handles, and everything you do in Final Cut 10 is baked in. There's... Also, an interesting article I read that said you can export from Final Cut 10 and then bring it into Logic and use that to mix it. But again, if someone is using Pro Tools, there is no good, easy way to get audio out of Final Cut 10 unless you have a plugin to do it for you. So now that I've shown you how to export out of the most common NLEs, I'm going to show you what it looks like on our end when we import it into Pro Tools. So here's the OMF that we exported from Premiere. 
we're going to do is just click on it, and it gives us these options to select either broadcast wave or eighth, have our sample rate, and here's our bit depth. So again, we could choose to be in a different bit depth or sample rate than you're in, which is why open communication between video editor and sound editor is so key to making sure that everything lines up properly. So I'll hit OK, and then I'll just name this Import. And then here is our window for when we want to import session data, which is a fancy way of saying OMF or AAF. So it recognizes that this is an OMF file. The start time is zero. This is the timecode format, bit depth, sample rate, and type of files it has with it. So it tells us all that to begin with. So we have a few audio media options. Normally what I do is either copy from source media. If we have the previous options of trim audio files or consolidate, we just copy and that'll give us the files with handles. Video media, we're gonna import later normally. So in the AAF and OMF, you normally wouldn't have the video come over. But this is what we see. So in an Avid project, these would be named. We would see the name of them. But in Premiere, it usually only has audio, whatever, and then has the number at the end of it. But then here you can see down at the very bottom, we can choose to import rendered audio effects. This is, again, where communication comes in. Because if you have audio effects, you can call us up and say, so we have this sequence that has a few effects we had to bake in there. You should import them so that way when we do a review, you're not suddenly surprised when a client says, so there was an effect here. I'm not sure what happened, but there should be an effect on this person or that piece of music. So that's where this would come in. We'd click that. So then we hit OK. And then here is our sequence, the same as it was in the other three. We can do fit to window. There we go. So here's our dialogue on one track, the, the two effects on this track, and then our music here. And we go in. And sure enough, there's our volume automation. So that's how everything comes over for us. If prepared properly, it should look just like it does in the sequence where the video editor set it up. So that is the workflow from going to a video entity to an audio DAW. Thanks very much. And Marcelo, over to you. Very cool, Curtis. Thank you so much. Excellent. Yeah, no problem. You gave a really nice overview of uh, the whole process. So at this point, you would do your thing, right? You would fix the audio, do whatever you need to do. And then do you export this? back and give it back to the video editors for importing into the NLE? Yes. Once I've mixed the audio, I will hand it back over. They can import it and then they can do a viewing or they can pass it on to whatever step is next. But for the most part, 95, I would say, percent of the time, what I hand back to video editors is mixed and either done or awaiting approval. I see. All right. Well, Curtis, I really want to thank you for presenting today. I really appreciate it. You gave us a brand new understanding of what we as video editors need to do to work better and smoother with you guys in audio. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Now, if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about you, where can they do that? They can go to our website here. It's alphadogs.tv. And if they want to directly get a hold of me, they can just email me. It's curtis at alphadogs.tv. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Curtis. And to the rest of you, please remember to check out more of our tutorials, videos, podcasts, and articles at digimediapros.com. So until the next tutorial, I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.